Thank you for watching this week's WeatherQuest farming forecast. We're going to start the video this week by talking a little bit about what you may have seen in the news headlines recently about uh, the potential for a cold winter coming up. It's not that uncommon that we see these kinds of news stories this time of year, particularly in the tabloid newspapers talking about potential cold spells, but where has this one come from? Well, uh, there has been a, a paper released in the last couple of weeks by the University College London uh, that looks at uh, solar activity and the winds very high up in the atmosphere and the interaction between those and how they lead to uh, a, a potentially cold winter coming up, particularly how they influence the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is, um, uh, I'll explain in the next couple of slides, uh, has two different phases. So in the warmer phase of the positive NAO, where we see unsettled, mild, and Atlantic dominated conditions, we usually end up with lower than normal pressure over Iceland, so already some deep lows across the North Atlantic in the winter time, but imagine very deep area of low pressure going to the northwest of uh, the British Isles and generally high pressure uh, down to the south of us, and that leads to a stronger southwesterly or westerly flow off of the Atlantic Ocean, bringing us uh, frequent weather systems, so unsettled conditions in terms of rain, but also generally milder conditions because the air is originating in the mid-Atlantic. So in a positive phase of of an NAO, a strong area of low pressure here, stronger area of high pressure here, and a very strong wind and jet stream uh, right across the British Isles. Now contrast that with a negative NAO, and in that case we see higher than normal pressure up here in the North Atlantic and near Iceland, and we see um, lower than normal high pressure or even low pressure to the south of us. And what happens there is the winds falling around a high pressure in a clockwise fashion, bring con continental cold air in from the east and give us potential cold spells. And this particular chart here is from the beast from the east uh, in uh, late February, early March of 2018, showing that cold air arriving. So this paper that was released suggests that there's a higher than normal chance that we'll see a negative phase of the NAO at some point during the upcoming winter, particularly in the months of January and February. That doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen, but it just is a slightly higher than normal chance. And even when you do see this negative NAO happen, it doesn't always bring the beast from the east, but it generally does bring us the potential for a cold snap and some drier conditions uh, into the winter. Now, back closer to where we are now in August, uh, looking back at the rainfall figures that we saw through the month of August, it was a very wet month across Scotland and northern parts of England, uh, much drier in the southeast of the UK, uh, particularly southern and, and eastern parts of England saw drier than normal conditions. And it's interesting when you look at the stats for that. So Dan showed one of these plots last week and what this is showing is uh, cooler conditions, cooler than average conditions on the left, warmer than average conditions on the right, drier than average conditions at the bottom, and wetter than average conditions at the top. So for example, if you had a very warm and wet uh, August, uh, you would expect to see uh, somewhere in this box. And if you had a cold, dry August, you would expect to see a dot somewhere in this box. So for the UK on average for the month of August 2019, we sit in this warm and wet box, which is highlighted in the previous slide by the above average rainfall that we saw across northwestern parts of Scotland. However, if you look a little bit further down into southeast England and East Anglia, you'll see that these two dots sit in the warm and dry box on this uh, particular statistic, highlighting the fact that some areas of England, and particularly in the south and east, uh, continuing to see below average rainfall. And this fits in with the uh, monthly water situation report that was issued by the Environment Agency uh, for August 2019. And it highlights, if you go to the website, the Environment Agency website, the highlights of this uh, report show that uh, August was another below average month in rainfall for East Anglia. About 68% of the average over the last 16 months. So we've highlighted that in previous farming forecasts where we've shown those graphs of a long-term trend of drier than normal conditions. We're starting to see some exceptionally gro low groundwater levels as well, particularly for uh, Stapleford and Linton. And uh, four of the five reservoirs in the region uh, remain below normal. So uh, this uh, sort of long-term trend of drier than average conditions uh, starting to really be highlighted in not only the rainfall figures, but also uh, groundwater and reservoir levels as well. 
Now, how do we fit in for the next couple of days? Well, we've still got a fairly active jet stream across northern parts of Britain. That's brought us a little bit of breezy and unsettled weather over the last day or two. But as we go toward the weekend, the jet stream lifts northwards like you would expect it to be during the summer months, uh, going well to the north of uh, the UK. Quite a strong jet stream across Iceland, so there still could be some quite deep areas of low pressure uh, just skirting to the north and west of the UK, but that high pressure uh, allowing to be built to the south. And this is what our uh, pressure and rainfall chart look like over the next couple of days, starting from Tuesday, where we'll still see a few weather systems coming in, some areas of low pressure extropical systems uh, from further south. But then by the end of this animation, as we go toward the weekend, we see this area of high pressure building from the south, and that will bring us back into some drier conditions, particularly by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and warming up a little bit as well. Now the knock-on effect uh, from this is that uh, a lot of farmers still out there doing some spraying and, uh, and doing some harvest, uh, starting the harvest for the, uh, the May season as well. Uh, we see uh, at the beginning here in the middle part of the week on Wednesday the 11th of September, low pressure to the north of Britain and uh, lots of isobars close together, so some fairly strong winds across the UK and some weak weather fronts as well. So spraying index not highlighting much spraying potential on Wednesday the 11th of September. We're going to see another area of low pressure by this little trough indicated by this trough here moving across Britain on Thursday. That will continue to bring tricky conditions for spraying uh, on Thursday. But by Friday, we start to see that high pressure building in centered just to the southwest of Ireland. Lots of green on this map highlighting ideal spraying conditions, light winds, dry conditions. So by Friday and then as we go into the weekend as well, Saturday and Sunday too, we'll see this high pressure sitting over Britain and bringing lots of spraying opportunities. So if you've struggled to get out there the last couple of days, plenty of spraying opportunities I think coming toward the end of this week, the weekend, and probably as you'll see in the next few slides, uh, probably even into next week as well. So uh, good news for the uh, for the maize harvest going on there. And along with the high pressure and the light winds, we'll see some sunshine as well, some quite sunny conditions I think expected by the weekend. And that'll bring our temperatures back up as well. So we've been in the mid-teens for high temperatures the last couple of days. Uh, we're looking at temperatures back into the low 20s, maybe even into the mid 20s by the end of the weekend. So uh, sunny and light winds and, and warm weather. If you are out on the sprayer though, and uh, the winds get up in the afternoon and you're wondering if you need to call it quits for the day or whether you might be able to continue on, um, you can always give our forecasters a ring on 09065777675. Those calls are charged at a pound 55 per minute plus network access charges, but we're here every day of the week uh, between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So feel free to give us a ring and we can give you a heads up of whether it might be worth calling it quits for the day or hanging out and just waiting for the winds to die back down. So as we always do, we're going to finish the, uh, the video here by talking about the next couple of weeks ahead uh, and what to expect and what this is showing uh, as we've shown in previous ones is uh, mean pressure anomaly. So this is whether we're expecting the pressure to be higher or lower than normal than average going into week two, which is the 16th of September to the 22nd of September. And very much uh, noticeable in this chart is the higher than normal pressure sitting over the British Isles. Uh, we've already talked about that high pressure building in, so we're going to see temperatures slightly above average for the time of year, particularly for southern areas. Lots of sunshine, light winds, it'll easily warm up by day. Probably still some chilly nights though uh, under that high pressure and some mist and fog around as well potentially. So it could make for a little bit of a damp, dewy start to the mornings if you are thinking about getting out spraying. You may need to just leave it a little while after the sun comes up there. But the precipitation anomaly for week two, very dry. In fact, uh, uh, not much rain expected at all during that um, second week of the forecast here. And that's highlighted in our potential water gain and loss. So what we're doing here for Bedford, which is fairly typical for most of central and southern England over that coming 10 day period, is looking at uh, precipitation amounts. So any rainfall subtracted by any evaporation that we'd expect. So we're getting into uh, mid-September now. We're not seeing as much evaporation as we normally would, like we would in the middle of the summer, for example. But we're still seeing that trend without any precipitation of evaporation winning out over the precipitation and in fact I think the ground uh, across much of central and eastern parts of England likely to be about a half an inch drier so about 10 millimeters drier than it currently is so we're already dry in many places and we're going to continue to dry out over the next 10 days with that high pressure not much change into week three as well still dominated by higher than normal pressure around the British Isles this will help block weather systems coming in from the Atlantic 
And we still see temperatures slightly above average for the time of year uh, leading into that last week of September and the dry conditions highlighted as well. So really for the next two, two and a half weeks, not much rain in the forecast uh, across most of England and Wales. Um, the pressure anomaly though does flip, so into week four we turn the calendar into October and we start to see what looks like a little bit more uh, autumn-like conditions, so lower than average pressure down to the south and west of the British Isles, that'll open the door in effect to the Atlantic and to weather systems coming in from the west. Uh, we'll still stay slightly warmer than average because we're still bringing air in from the southwest, from the mid-Atlantic, but we will start to see conditions turning a little bit wetter. So in that first week of October, highlighting some slightly wetter than average uh, rainfall totals, uh, particularly across southern England. So if you are looking for that rain, there are some signs of this drier spell of weather coming to an end as we turn the page from September into October. So to just uh, highlight um, all of that, it's uh, going to be breezy and uh, with some really light rain, I think, around the area through about Thursday, some weak weather fronts pushing through, but not producing a lot of rain, particularly for southern and eastern parts of Britain. But then becoming more settled as we go toward the weekend and in fact into the coming week after that, staying generally settled through much of the end of September. And then as we just talked about in the previous slide, perhaps turning the page there into something more unsettled and wetter as we go toward the end of the month. As always, thank you for watching the WeatherQuest Farming Forecast. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can send us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk or you can hashtag us on WQ Farming Forecast on Twitter. Thanks for watching.